so recently my grandparents gave me their old record player when they moved but it's just been sitting on the floor for the past few months getting dusty i really need a better solution for this so today we're going to be building a record player cabinet but here's the thing because my shop is only 8 by 12 feet i'm going to have to build this entirely outside so close holy sh ah it's the middle of the winter right now, so that might be a little bit challenging. After quite a bit of sketching, this is the design that I've landed on. I want this cabinet to have curved corners so it matches my guitar amp. And the front is going to have this cool, naturally carved contour. This will make more sense once we get started. The first thing I had to do to start building this piece of furniture was to cut out this eight foot long piece of Baltic birch plywood, which I would later bend to create the cabinet itself. With the help of my dad, we ran it through the table saw, but I quickly realized it would just be easier to use the track saw to remove the remaining material. I started this project at the beginning of my month long winter break from college, so I thought for sure I was going to be able to get this done by the end of break. Okay, so now that we've cut that groove on the back side, it's time to start cutting the curved corners. Okay, a template. Just gonna mark out each little tick mark. This is a template that I generated online which tells me how many cuts to make to get the desired corner radius. Everything was going fairly well until I tried to make the first cut, and then, ah, just broke the circuit. Whoops. Ah, we're back. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. An instrument everybody loves. <sighs> okay, moment of truth. Yes. 90 degrees. Dude, it never gets old. I didn't want to leave it outside last night, so I ended up clamping on this long board so that I could carry it without it cracking. The worst thing that could happen is one of these corners cracking because that means I'd have to completely restart that's what I had to do on my guitar amp build. But because this cabinet is so much bigger, if I break it, let's not even think about that happening. So the next thing I have to do is cut these grooves in the side, which are called dados. And this will allow this top shelf to slide in from the back. After a little bit of chiseling, it was time to see if I'd cut it too big or too small. Okay, how does it fit? That's pretty good. Test the fit of this one here. Ooh, dude, that's good. <laughs> heavy, heavy as can be. Whew. Time to fold this thing up for the first time. I've been pretty nervous to do this because this is the part where I could potentially crack the curve cuts Okay. Good lord. Okay. This is much harder than I thought. Oh yes. Okay, this is working now. Ah, first one is on. Ooh, okay. This appears to be working as well. Oh boy, now this is the hard part. What if I... Oh, that's not good. Um, these guys clamp over top so the curves don't bend backwards and crack. This is quite the process, I will admit. This idea of clamping the boards over the curve cuts was probably one of my more genius ideas over the course of this build. Gonna remove these now. This is the real test. Bend this guy in. Woo! Ooh, I haven't heard any cracking sounds yet. Okay, we are secure. Clamp that on. Pull this in a little bit. Please don't crack, please don't crack. These little clamps are working really well. For these. Oh, <sighs> We're looking good here. So because a full sheet of plywood is only eight feet long, 
That meant I was left with this empty section in the middle that I was going to need a piece for. Get this piece of plywood up here. Retired it, man. Retired it. They don't really want to hear the truth no more. Think they scared how I make them feel. And you can say anything you want about me. I ain't worried that don't make it real. They don't really want to hear the real no more. Think they scared how I make them act. And you can say anything you want about me, I ain't tripping that don't make it fat. Now to join this cabinet together, I was lucky enough to borrow my friend Alex's domino jointer, which makes joining two pieces of wood together super easy. Doing joinery with the domino kind of feels like cheating because it's just that easy. At this point, I called it quits for the day and I planned on doing the big glue up the next day. This is the method here. I woke up the next day to some crisp 18 degree weather, which would prevent some unforeseen challenges. The worst of which was that Yo, the glue ain't flowing. I quickly ran inside and borrowed my dad's electric space okay. heater and plugged it into the extension cord just off it's camera. a little bit better now. My strategy was to put the glue bottle next to the heater every 30 seconds or so, ah. so that the glue didn't freeze. Whoa, what happened there? Please work. It was at this point that I just gave up on keeping my hands clean. This is getting really messy. Sometimes you just gotta get in there and worry about cleaning up later. Yeah! Okay. Ah, oh, see that massive gap? Oh, I can't do that yet. Dude, we gotta resolve this gap. Yo, let's go. Close the gap successfully. It's too cold in the shop to leave it to dry overnight, so I took it inside, and the next day, I brought it back outside with the help of my parents, because this thing is pretty heavy. I just finished sanding the inside corners where the kerfs are and I was able to get it pretty smooth. I actually moved the cabinet inside the shop because it's definitely too cold outside for what I have to do next. So from the beginning, I knew that I wanted this cabinet to match my guitar amp, which has the outer walnut case and the maple front. I just really like the contrast of the maple and the walnut. And I kind of think that the walnut just makes it look a little bit more high end. So I ended up buying this four by eight sheet of walnut veneer and it was kind of pricey. I think it cost $90. Okay, I'm starting off by drawing a perpendicular line so that I can line up the veneer because I don't want it to accidentally get off track and then not cover the edge of the plywood. This is the contact adhesive that I'm using. And because I didn't want to pass out, I wore this vapor mask. Even with the garage door fully open for ventilation, this stuff smelled terrible. After letting the glue set up, I was ready to veneer this cabinet with the help of my dad. I think we'll be okay. Yes, you certainly did, but things don't always go as smoothly as you hoped. Oh. This is not good. With not even a foot of veneer on, I could quickly see that it was misaligned. And if I'd kept going, it would have veered off the edge of the cabinet. After some quick thinking, my dad got the heat gun and we were able to slowly melt the glue and peel okay, it off. So we're gonna overlap this side a little bit more. Appears to be working. Yes, Miles, but things aren't always as they appear. Uh, all right, yeah. I'll make it work. Turns out my plan of overlapping the front side more to compensate for any misalignment really backfired. And well, I was left with about an inch wide gap. After splicing in a strip of veneer, it was almost unnoticeable, and I was feeling pretty good that I managed to save myself from that mistake. Hey, 
Hey man, how's the video editing going? It's going pretty well. I'm about halfway done. Still can't believe I made that mistake when I was doing the veneer. Probably should have watched some videos beforehand. Whoa, whoa, dude, are you connected to the internet unprotected? I mean, I guess. What's the problem? Come on, man. We both can agree that safety is super important in the shop, right? Mm. I mean, that's why you wear your dust mask, right? You need to be just as safe on the internet as you are in the shop. Have you heard of NordVPN? NordVPN? Yeah, NordVPN is the best way to protect yourself online from cyber attacks or malware. Your dust mask blocks the toxic wood particles from going into your lungs. NordVPN basically does the same thing, but on the internet. The threat protection feature blocks any intrusive ads or web trackers. And also when you download files, threat protection inspects it for malware. Hmm. Dude, you don't want anyone messing with your files, right? I, I mean, your computer is where we're storing all the footage for this video. I mean, I hadn't really thought about that. NordVPN is super easy to use. I've actually been using it since we first got here at college a couple months ago, and I can even use the app on my phone when I'm connected to the school's public Wi-Fi. NordVPN also allows you to access content online from 5,400 different servers in 60 different countries. That means if you're trying to watch a movie and it's not available in your current location, you can simply change your virtual location and watch it from a different country. Now, how would I get NordVPN on my device? You can get a NordVPN to your plan for a huge discount plus one month free if you go to nordvpn.com slash makewithmiles or click the link in the description of this video. Thank you again to Nord for sponsoring this video. Dude, I'm getting it right now. Let's go, dude. Veneering the outside was much easier, mainly because I had a few extra inches of veneer to work with on either side. I almost forgot to do this, but I used a straight edge and a knife to cut out the veneer where the slots for the shelf are. Guys, it's very cold. So because the veneer piece was only eight feet long and it didn't stretch all the way around, I'm left with this center section that I'm gonna need a patch with some additional veneer. Now, because I want this cabinet to last for a long time, I decided to go with some thick quarter inch solid walnut for the edge banding. This makes the edges of the cabinet more durable to any bumps or dents. Now that I'm done routing the edge banding, it's time for sanding. I think it was right about now that I started getting really frustrated because the tent was leaking and dripping water on the cabinet. So I decided to shift gears a bit. to give the edge banding a slight round over. Usually I do this with my sander, but using an eighth inch round over bit on the router gave me a much more consistent result. It was time to figure out what the inside was gonna look like and how I was gonna organize everything. I started out by cutting the top shelf from some walnut plywood that was left over from my TV lift cabinet, which I built a while back. Okay, so I have the shelf cut out, and I was thinking that it would be pretty cool to have some LED lights on the underside of the shelf that illuminate the records. And what would be even cooler is if the lights turn on when I open one of the doors. Now I have this LED strip left over from an old project, so I think I'm gonna route a channel in the underside of the shelf for this to go in. Routing that slot went pretty well. I think it's gonna work out, but now it's time to attach these vertical dividers. The center section is gonna be the record storage and these two outer compartments are gonna be for the speakers. 
Well, I made a mistake. I thought I was supposed to be going on this line, so I did this one on accident. You won't really see it because it's on the underside, but it still bothers me. Once again, the dominoes went pretty quickly, and before I could glue everything up, I cut this little half circle which will allow the cords for the turntable and speakers to pass through. It's kind of hard to believe, but up until this point in my life, I've never actually sharpened a chisel. And this can mainly be attributed to the fact that I've never really had a proper setup to do so. It did kind of make me feel some imposter syndrome like I wasn't a real woodworker. That's so sharp. But luckily, the kind folks over at Trend Tool Technology offered to send me their diamond stone sharpening system. So I sharpened a chisel for the first time. Now the next thing I needed to do was figure out the front and back of this cabinet. And for both, I'm going to be using this half inch sheet of plywood which my mom helped me carry out. Thanks mom. Carrying a full sheet of plywood by yourself is really difficult because of how cumbersome and awkward it is. Naturally, I'm the kind of person who wants to do it all by myself and sometimes I have a hard time asking for help. But especially with projects this big, it's okay to let people give you a hand once in a while. Oh, let's go. Now I gotta make the doors. <sighs> well, this isn't necessarily ideal. Somehow the tent is leaking, I'm not sure, but I really need to finish this before I head back to college. After a few days of relentless rain, I was finally able to fully get back to work on the doors. Up until this point in the build, I was in pretty good spirits, despite the number of mistakes and difficulties. But after this point, my mood and outlook for this project seemed to go downhill, seeing as I'd have to head back to college in just a few days, and I was nowhere near finished with this cabinet. So I've never made anything before that has doors, or hinges for that matter. After consulting with my friend Michael Alm, he suggested that I use some sauce hinges, which are a type of concealed hinge. The hinges require you to mortise out a slot for them, and this took quite a bit of finessing, but once I got it to fit, it was incredibly satisfying. These hinges are not cheap by any means, but if I'm spending this much time on a piece of furniture, I think it's definitely worth the extra cost. Using some indie ink here. As I finished dyeing the doors black, I knew that I was far from reaching my goal of finishing the cabinet because I had to head back to college just the next day. The next weekend, I decided to come back home with high hopes that I was able to finish this project. Okay, so up until this point, Everything that I built is not that visually interesting. So now it's time to move on to the main focus of this piece, which is the front of the cabinet. The front of the cabinet is going to have this natural contour, and it's gonna be made up of a lot of these vertical strips. And by a lot, I mean 72. So a couple years ago, I bought these maple cutting board blanks on Craigslist for about $12 each, thinking that I was gonna start making and selling cutting boards. Turns out making cutting boards just isn't for me. Oh my goodness, dude, that was a lot of work. But now I've got 72 pieces right here and we can move on to the fun part, which is power carving. It'd be pretty funny if I just glued this back into a cutting board. I don't think that'd be a great use of time. After carving the contour with my ArborTech mini carver, I moved on to sanding through the grits and then I was able to lay this out and see how it was actually going to look. Final one. As I applied a coat of finish to the final strip, I started to see just how far along I'd come with this project. 
but quickly, a feeling of disappointment set in, knowing that I wasn't going to be able to finish it in just one weekend. I'd already gone home one weekend to work on it, so why not do it again? Trying to decide if I want to dye this back panel black or just leave it as is. I think it would look a lot cleaner if I just made it black so it kind of blends in. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, it's looking pretty good. Super even coat. So I'm going to take it inside to dry and then we can move on to the next step of this build. Okay, so now that we're done with that, it's time to make the legs for this cabinet. I thought you already had legs. Dude, not you again. Get out of here. Come on, man. Get better sense of humor. Wipe away the squeeze out a little bit. Only recently have I become a wiper. Let me know in the comments, do you wipe the glue or do you scrape it? At this point, I had shifted my mindset from needing to finish it quickly to taking my time and doing things the right way. I probably already spent well over 100 hours on this project, so it would really be foolish to rush through the final steps. With the base done, I could turn my attention to the LED lights. Because I wanted the lights to turn on when the door opened, that meant that I needed to splice in a momentary switch so that when the door is pressing on it, the lights are off. As Sunday afternoon rolled around, I realized for the third time that I'd underestimated the amount of hours I needed to finish this project. Sick. I felt pretty defeated that I hadn't reached my goal for the second weekend in a row. One week of school and a long bus ride later, I was back home. Guys, it's happening. I'm back from college for the weekend so I can finish this up. It's finally time to put the doors on and see what this looks like. I started this project December 10th and now it's January 28th, so over a full month of work. But let's get these doors on and see how it looks. This project really tested my patience, unlike any other project I've worked on. It was one of the most exhausting builds I've done. From the numerous bus trips back and forth to college, to trying to squeeze in every moment of daylight and good weather. Despite the feeling that I wanted to give up at certain points, the satisfaction of finishing something this big outweighs any of the struggles or challenges I've faced. Yes, dude. Everything was going smoothly, but just as I was adding the last screw to the door, the weather decided to show its face one last time. So close. Holy sh Ah. Jesus. The tent literally almost blew away. Okay, moment of truth. Dude. I can't believe that works on the first try. It's perfect. Dude, I'm so happy right now. Now I just gotta add some magnets on the inside of the cabinet so that when I close these, they latch shut. This was such a long project. Honestly, it was probably the most frustrating project I've done just because of how big it is and uh, also the weather. I think in the future, I'm going to plan on things taking longer than I expect, and I'm not going to set such unrealistic expectations for myself. Check it out guys, I'm so stoked about how this turned out. This was actually an insane amount of work, I felt like everything took longer than I expected, but I'm so glad I persisted because this is probably one of the nicest pieces that I've made. It's such a unique feeling when you spend so many hours of your life on something and then you're finally done with it all of a sudden.
again, thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video. By supporting my sponsors, you're directly supporting me. If you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out to hit the like button. And if you want to see my next video, you can hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching.